for people getting to log in. So I propose that we respect the time that we have. So um, we'll go on to... No, I'm saying the last one, but you sent me work, right. But I think somebody has to send it to others. Okay. All right. You, yeah. All right. Valerie, could you... All right, thanks. Valerie, could you mute your uh, mic? Thanks. Um, so what I propose is that um, we'll take the presentation to about um, uh, 2.45 and over the next half hour. Um, other people probably have to leave at that point, but I'm happy to stay on for another 10 minutes just for any questions um, so that we make the most use of our time. So. Welcome everybody, um, and it's a good number 10, and maybe other people will join in the course of the presentation. Um, my name is Alan Mackey, and for those who haven't um, crossed me before in this group, I'm Director of uh, Training and Professional Development. Um, the uh, the uh, aim of the presentation is that by the end of the webinar, we'll all have gained a, a better understanding of the following. Uh, the purpose of a logic model, what it, it's intended to do and why in evaluation we might use them. Um, a suggested process of inquiry to go about um, creating a logic model, uh, particularly one that's suited for evaluation. And then perhaps just proposing a usable uh, template, something that you can go away and uh, use as a, as a logic model for evaluation purposes. Um, so that's what I hope we'll achieve in the next uh, half hour. Um, just a number of warnings. Uh, there's no single correct way to construct a model. Um, uh, if you look at the subject, if you look at other people's evaluations, there are many ways in which helpful logic models are constructed and put about. They generally follow a similar pattern, uh, and we'll look at that sort of general pattern in the course of the next half hour. Um, but there are, it is really a matter of individual preference. So there will be some people in the group who are experienced evaluators who might go around uh, do things differently. Um, and that would be useful to hear from you in the discussion. Um, but I think it's important that whatever uh, way we construct the logic model, that we take account of the needs of the evaluation, um, that we actually are thinking about what it is we're evaluating uh, we're thinking about what it is we're actually modeling. A model is really just a, a way of a scheme, a way of describing uh, the processes that we will be evaluating. So we need to take that into account. Um, and then finally, a logic model is simply an evaluation tool. It's something that really is to help us um, to evaluate, to monitor uh, the processes of an intervention, and then to measure its outcomes. It's not really an end in itself, so it's really a tool to, to get us started in our evaluation proper. Um, so what is a logic model? Um, this quote here from the community toolbox is quite clear. It says, an effective logic model, make an explicit, often visual statement of the activities that will bring about change and the results you expect to see for the community and, and its people. And I think um, the, the first uh, word here, you know, effective, um, and that's what I was saying. We need to have a, we need to design a logic model that's going to suit the evaluation, that's going to faithfully record the intervention that we're, we're trying to assess. So, so, so that's important, it has to be effective. Explicit is another word that I thought was worthy of highlighting. In other words, the logic model should be clear and detailed and avoid any confusion or doubt. And I have to say, I've seen some logic models in the past which are really sort of crammed full of information and crammed full of detail. And it's very difficult to kind of understand the logic or the, or the model that, or the processes that we're trying to measure. Um, and maybe in, in those circumstances when you're trying to model uh, some complex interventions, then it's perhaps better maybe to drill down or layer uh, the model or the parts of the model or nest them, but have a sort of helicopter view, which is clear, detailed, and um, doesn't avoid, uh, doesn't um, uh, cause any confusion or doubt. I think um, the activities are very important. And for the course of this presentation, I'm going to just take for an example, 
um, a holiday, uh, a youth holiday uh, club uh, whose activities are designed to keep young people occupied and reduce antisocial behaviour in a, in a neighbourhood. So that's a kind of little imaginary uh, project that uh, I'll use to illustrate the, the logic model. And the expected results, the, the changes um, that we would see, and in that one of, say, a, a, a youth holiday club, we'd want to see the changes in the community would be um, a feeling of increased community safety um, uh, and fewer complaints against uh, young people for antisocial behaviour or reduction in arrests. Um, so that's the kind of changes that we would expect to see. So there's a handy example of, of what is a logic model. I think it's also clear to say that logic models have a number of different purposes and they're used by different people. Um, they can be used in project planning. So a group of people who want to start a new intervention, say they want to start a, a youth club in a particular neighborhood over the summer vacation, might want to use a, a logic model to think about the activities, to think about the outcomes, and really to help them plan and ensure that they've got the resources to, to do that. So uh, they can be used in project planning. They can also be used in project implementation. So once you've got all the resources, you might use a, a logic model to ensure that you're, you've got all the resources, the inputs, the outputs, the activities, and the outcomes uh, all in place. Um, they might be used in staff orientation. So if in the example of the youth club, you are recruiting um, youth workers, then uh, you could maybe use them, uh, use the logic model to orientate the staff to show them where they sit um, in relation to all the other activities of the youth club. But really what we're looking at is a logic model for project evaluation. Uh, so that's uh, similar, but I think a slightly uh, different um, purpose for the logic model. So that's what we're going to be looking at um, this afternoon. Well, I think um, the, the big question is what to include in a logic model. Um, and this is just a, a, a very kind of um, simple scheme of the types of things that we might want to put in. Uh, a logic model and typically um, you want to account in a kind of flow diagram um, the resources that you have which might be the grant funding or any in-kind funding uh, so what is it that you are you what are the funds that you have to um, to to start a project um, then you want to look at the inputs and the inputs um, you know in the fairly standard definition of an input these are the resources that contribute towards the delivery of the program. Uh, and they're typically things like um, labor or workers or physical assets or IT systems. So in the example of the, the Summer Youth Club to reduce antisocial behavior, um, we'll have to have several inputs. We'll have to have some process uh, to refer young people to the project and maybe to have some risk assessment tool to assess their risk and, and perhaps the type of activities that they might want to be directed to. We'll certainly need to have human resources. We'll need to have managers and youth workers, uh, someone to manage the program and then some youth workers to deliver the activities. And they're very much inputs. And we can relate those, they'll probably be salaried, so we can maybe relate those to the grant funding. And then we might have volunteers, so they're not being paid, but um, they're still a kind of um, a resource. Um, they might require some training in, in the operation of the um, youth club's activities. So um, possibly there might not be a, a salary to be paid. There is some other cost involved in the volunteers. Uh, and then the premises. There might be a place, a headquarters for the youth club over the summer. And that might, there might not be no rent. The local authority or the local government might sort of let people use um, a community hall or something for that time. But again, we'd want to try and work out what the value of that is. So the inputs, as I say, are all the resources um, that are involved in the delivery of the programme. The outputs um, are really those things, they're really the services that were provided by the programme 
to its participants. Um, and it's also the and also the type of activities that were involved. And often here, um, logic models distinguish between participants and activities. So we want to, some of the outputs would be, you know, the number of young people that participated in the um, in the summer youth club. Um, so it might say, well, we're open to all young people in the neighbourhood. So you want to perhaps just see well, how many young people overall from the neighbourhood came. But the local police might want to target some at-risk young people or the school might want to help target some at-risk young people. People that they know might just be at a loose end over the summer and cause, um, you know, cause vandalism, cause disruption. Uh, and these are the people that we might want to uh, assess and get into the programme. But they're very much sort of seen as outputs, the number of young people that you've seen. And you might want to distinguish between the different categories of participants. Then the other type of outputs are very much the activities. So in this one, the summer youth group will probably have group activities. It might have um, a game of pickup uh, soccer or football or a game of pickup basketball. Um, it, there might be a, an outing um, to, to go bowling or something. So the sort of group activities that you'd normally find in a, in a youth club. We'd want to record how many of those activities took place. We might also be interested if there was any one-to-one -one mentoring, so some individual work, um, or also any volunteering, so whether there were people who actually went out, young people themselves who went out to volunteer and maybe did some, um, say, gardening or old elderly people's gardens or uh, painting of elderly people's windows or whatever that is. And then finally, um, we want to have uh, the outcomes. And often these are defined as the short, medium and long-term outcomes. And again, that kind of time aspect will be dictated by the programme itself as to you know, what the short-term outcome is. But typically, I thought in, in our example of the Summer Youth Club, uh, the short-term um, uh, outcomes would be uh, the numbers of young people who are involved. And you might put a target of saying, well, we want to you know, involve, um, uh, we want to involve 75% um, of the young people in the neighbourhood. The medium term outcomes might be a reduction in arrests uh, of, of young people, or a reduction in antisocial behaviour, or criminal damage, etc. And the long term uh, outcome of our programme might be increased community safety. But as I say, um, all the time aspects of these outcomes and when they need to be achieved would really be part of understanding uh, very clearly what the programme is set up to do, with the resources that it has. And so we're talking about a model, we're talking about a logic model. So there are, we're going to start making inferences that if you have these resources, you should be able to um, purchase these inputs um, and then those inputs will deliver a number of outputs. And those outputs or activities will be suitable um, to achieve the outcome. So there'll be some, uh, so there's a kind of control or an inference um, of, um, uh, between the different parts of the model that we're inferring that all these things will come about. If one, if one step of the model is true, then the next step will fall into place. Um, could I just remind people just to um, ensure the microphone's muted um, so we don't have any background noise. We are recording um, uh, recording this. So um, that's really what the, the logic model is and what it broadly contains. Um, but I would argue that an effective logic model has to be based on a rigorous process of inquiry. I sometimes think that the sort of very sort of large, complex uh, logic models are really just, um, they might have all the different um, steps in the logic model. They might have resources, they might have inputs, they might have um, outputs and outcomes, but there's really, um, there's really been a, a lack of any understanding of the logical uh, processing, the, the sort of inferences from uh, if we have these resources, we can get these inputs, that if we have these inputs, we'll deliver those outputs. That kind of breaks down, I think, in, 
in some uh, logic models that I've seen. So um, we want to ensure that we understand those sort of logical inferences. Um, and we also want to be very clear about the processes that we are modeling. Um, in the example of the, the Summer Youth Club, the processes are quite simple. Basically, you've got some funding, you'll recruit some staff, uh, you'll recruit some young people, uh, you'll deliver interventions, and those activities or interventions will uh, bring about the outcomes that you want to achieve. Um, and then finally, I think an effective logic model has to identify where the data are going to be sourced to complete the model. Um, as I say, we're, we're, we're in evaluation and particularly quantitative evaluation, outcome evaluation, we do need data uh, to demonstrate that we've uh, met these outcomes. So where are those data to come? The model's a very handy place to sort of show where the data sit in terms of whether it's an input or whether it's data talking about an output or an outcome, but where do those data come? So we need a, a fairly rigorous process of inquiry. Uh, and this is where I think we can use a theory of change to develop the logic model. Often in the literature, theories of change and logic models are seem to be um, much the same thing. Um, I think they're, they're highly complementary, but they are quite different and each have a slightly different function. Um, so I think before beginning to uh, think about the logic model, then I think I'd recommend that people begin to think about the theory of change because they do, these two ideas sit very well together. Um, so Vice, um, well I've used Connell and Caboosh from the Aspen Institute, they did a lot of work in the 90s and early 2000s on um, evaluating community change and basing that on a theory of change and uh, defining logic models. Um, but really, a, a theory of change really is just the story of how and why an in initiative works. Um, that's all it is. And Connell and Kabush uh, built on Vice's work and they defined a theory of change as a systematic and cumulative study of the links between activities, outcomes, and contexts of the initiative. So in that final bit, we can see uh, very clearly how um, a theory of change is really inquiring into the same thing. It's inquiring into the activities. Um, it's, it, it's inquiring into the outcomes. Um, and it's trying to make the links, it's trying to make the inferences mm -hmm. between these things as to why, if you set up a summer youth club, you would uh, reduce antisocial behavior in an area. So um, then very quickly, you know, how do we articulate a theory of change? It seems quite a sort of complex thing. Um, it seems rather abstract. I'm, I'm not sure it is. And again, um, I've often used in this work, um, Connell and Caduceus, um, uh, three questions in determining a strong theory of change. And the first question is, is it plausible? So before setting down uh, to, to think about your logic model, think about, well, is it really plausible? Does the evidence and the common sense suggest that if we do set up a, a youth club in this neighborhood that we will see and we deliver group activities and mentoring and counseling that we will see, we will see a, a decrease in antisocial behavior and an increase in community safety. And I think common sense suggests that's a, a, a very plausible way, and I'm sure there's evidence to support that. But it's a very important question just to think very carefully when, before you start uh, preparing your logic model, do we really have any common sense or evidence to suggest that the interventions uh, that you're modeling will achieve the outcome? Um, the second question that, uh, Connell and Caboose uh, apply to ask when it's ask is, um, is the theory of change doable? Uh, and really there they're asking, you know, is the program sufficiently resourced um, to carry out um, the, its program of work and to achieve its outcome? And they're not simply here talking about resources in terms of economic or financial resources. Um, those are important, but they're also looking at the technical resources. 
um, they're looking at the political and institutional resources. Does the chief of police support the youth club? Um, does the um, superintendent of education support the youth club? Um, do you have sufficient youth workers? Are they suitably trained uh, to deliver the interventions that will bring about the outcome? So here again, when we're thinking about um, when we're thinking about um, outcomes, well, sorry, when we're thinking about um, resources, we're thinking very widely. Um, some of these we can quantify. Uh, some of these we might have to uh, apply a, a kind of measure in about some other kind of proxy measure. But I think they're all very important um, uh, to to think about. And then finally, the final question is: Is it testable? Um, can the programs, activities, and intended outcomes be monitored and tracked in a meaningful way? And I think this question is really asking us: Do we have the data uh, to to measure the the the, the number of staff, the, num the inputs that we have to measure the types of activities that we're delivering, the numbers of young people and the outcomes. So do we really have the data to test um, both the, all of the inputs, outputs and the outcomes uh, and to track them in a meaningful way? So I would sort of recommend this. Um, I think if you sort of use these three questions then they provide a very good basis um, of just beginning to articulate the theory of change. Once you have understood that, then I think you can begin to model um, model your uh, logic model um, much, much better. As I say, there's um, quite a, a number of different ways of, of using logic models. I'm sure in the discussion people will have their own favorite. Um, I come from a background of evaluation uh, which is quantitative, so we like to have quantitative measures. Um, and uh, so this is a, a framework that I use um, because I think it does give us a lot of ability to think about quantitative measures and then to think about uh, measures of economy, efficiency, effectiveness, and cost effectiveness. And as you'll see, the top line of uh, this logic model or uh, monitoring and evaluation framework is very familiar to the standard uh, logic model. We're identifying our resources, so we're identifying the funds uh, that are provided to the program. Um, we're identifying the inputs of so the staff and the premises and the um, referral mechanisms to get the young people in. We're then identifying the outputs, so we're identifying the, the, the young people who are participating in the activities that they are taking part in, and we're then uh, space to record the outcomes. So we can look at um, a space for measuring uh, um, decreases in arrests or incidences of antisocial behavior or um, improvements in community of safety. I see in that top line that it's a very kind of um, it's a kind of uh, logical process that if you have the appropriate resources, you can get the necessary inputs to deliver the appropriate outputs to achieve the outcome. So there is that um, uh, uh, model where we can look at the inferences uh, between different parts of the, of the logic model. If we were able to populate these with uh, quantitative data, um, data about um, finances, so dollar amounts, or numbers of young people, or numbers of activities, or uh, a quantitative outcome, so uh, reductions in antisocial behavior expressed in, in numbers or percentages, then we can begin to um, develop some performance indicators around economies. So we could look at how economical the the project was being. Uh, so we can look at the economy measure, which is really just thinking about the costs of acquiring uh, the staff and uh, training the volunteers. So we can see how economical the project has been in setting itself up. And that's often an important question in a process evaluation. If we were then very clear about the numbers of uh, youth workers um, and the numbers of 
young people seen or the numbers of group activities, then we can begin to develop a measure of efficiency. So we can see, well, actually, are we getting the maximum output for the inputs that are going into the program? And that's important. So in this one, uh, the summer youth program, we're probably thinking about a number of um, group activities and they'll be more efficient because you'll need fewer um, uh, youth workers to deliver um, uh, an activity to a greater number of young people. So that's more efficient. If you're doing one-to-one -one work, then the efficiency ratio is less. You're, you've still got one youth worker, but you're only working with one child at a time. So um, efficiency is quite a good um, uh, measure just to see, well, you know, are we delivering this with more group work where we can be more efficient or do we need to um, look at um, uh, more one-to-one -one work which might be less efficient? However, the effectiveness outcome, which is then we're looking at the relationship between outputs and outcomes, and that's the key evaluation question, um, might dictate that actually one-to-one -one work is more effective, that actually if you're meeting a young person and developing a relationship with them, um, then that's perhaps more effective than trying to engage uh, a young person, perhaps who's more at risk of committing antisocial behavior. Um, um, uh, it's more difficult to achieve that in a group than it would be in a one-to-one -one, um, setting. So there is a tension between efficiency and effectiveness, but effectiveness tends to be the, the key evaluation criteria. And then finally, um, where we might look at cost effectiveness, this is something that's more for economists that you might look at the sort of cost benefit or the cost effectiveness, I should say, of, well, we invested X thousand uh, dollars in this program and we got uh, these outcomes. So the cost of um, reducing uh, arrests was X number of dollars. We can begin to make that kind of assumption. The final little flag which I put on this um, is the context. And if you remember, that was very much part of Connell and Kabush's um, theory of change work, that you have to understand the context. Um, so we might be implementing the Summer Youth Club in a very a uh, quiet um, uh, neighborhood with very few young children uh, or very few children or young people uh, with very little problems with crime. And that would be a very different context than putting it in a, a neighborhood which has much more entrenched social problems of poverty or crime or drug use or unemployment. So the context in which we're working in is very important to account for too. So that's a, what I think is a, a kind of usable model if you're into more quantitative evaluation because we can have space to put quantitative data in for each of the sections of the logic model and we are able to generate some interesting measures of a program's economy, efficiency and effectiveness. So just in conclusion, um, a logic model should be clear and succinct. Um, I hope my presentation <laughs> has been clear and succinct. Um, it should really capture only what's relevant. Um, so don't try and fill up your logic models with everything you can think of. Um, please relate the logic model to the program's theory of change. There are different ideas, but they do work hand in glove. And I hope that I've demonstrated that. Um, you should be able to model the inferences within the theory of change. So if you do X, Y will occur. And that's what we're looking for in that kind of flowchart effect um, throughout the logic model. There should be uh, some inference from one part of the model to the next. Um, I would say it must be capable of being operationalized. And I think that's the virtue of the, of the model that I've showed you, that you could put it into operation. You can use that for... Uh, your evaluation. Often um, uh, people do the logic model and then they just um, put it aside. It's just something that you do, but they don't really use it for uh, running the evaluation. Um, so then the final two points for, for a good logic model, it should serve the evaluation um, and it should be kept under review. So um, 
that's really um, all I have to say. I'll just leave you with this cartoon of uh, some complicated um, logical sequencing and then in the middle, then a miracle appears and uh, one boffin saying to the other, I think you should be more explicit here in step two. So I'll leave that with you. Um, the time is now 2.47. Uh, I'm anyone who now needs to leave. Um, uh, thank you for attending. Um, if those who want to stay, I can stay for another 10 minutes and um, help with any discussion or deal with any questions that people might have. Valerie. Hi, yes, thank you, Alan. Um, that was succinct. <laughs> and um, I think, um, you know, persons would have got a pretty good understanding of you know, the process. Um, I, I would ask if anyone has any questions. Um, Hello. Yes, Hello. go ahead. Yes, this is Caroline. Thank you, Alan, for a um, good presentation. A uh, question to you. What would you say to persons who uh, tell you that um, logic modeling is too linear and it is not reflective of reality? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, that might, well, um, that might be true in certain circumstances. Um, uh, the, in, in terms of most things that we're evaluating, there is a, a tend the processes do tend to have a beginning, a middle, and an end, like all good stories. Um, so there is that linear uh, approach seems to be sensible. So if you take the youth club, it has a beginning that people are setting up for the, um, uh, the program. Um, it has a middle that it has its operations, that young people are involved in the, in the activities. And then it has its end in terms of the outcomes. Um, so I think that's justifiable. So you could say, yes, well, it should be linear. There should be that sort of logical sequencing and inferences across the logic model. Um, however, there could be some programs which are more complex um, and that it is too linear. Um, and so in those cases, um, what you might want to do is, is sort of take different parts of the logic model and expand them. Um, I think you've always got to have that helicopter view in keeping in mind the sort of story of the beginning, the middle, and the end. Um, but you could then begin to sort of unpack the different elements. Um, and as we're saying, maybe you, you drill down a little more deeply um, into the logic model, and, um, or you begin to perhaps create other kind of nests of, of information. Um, so. I am sure there are more complex programs that this approach doesn't work for. Um, and I think that's where I would generally counsel. Uh, um, it's got to serve the evaluation and it's got to reflect the program that you're doing. If you're doing a much more complex program with kind of uh, where the interventions are more circular, then I can see that this perhaps does break down. Um, but I think it's a, uh, it's a good model for most interventions because most things in life are quite simple, but under the caveat, we've really got to understand what the program is doing. And if the program has more sort of loop arounds in the intervention, then we have to be a A good question. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Alan. You, you asked the question, uh, Caroline, um, and I'm not sure if you had some experience that you wanted to share um, when people have said that the logic model is not suitable or it's too linear. Do you have anything that you want to experiences that you would like to share with the group on that that might be helpful? Yes, I have. I have um, come across uh, some models that as you said, are very complex to the point that it become, 
it it becomes not useful um you know to to the owners the, the project owners mm. so so what you have said in terms of you know having a good balance and um you know perhaps using the nested approach to you know tease out other elements that stakeholders mm. might want to to interrogate further mm. i i i tend to in my own practice i tend to prefer that rather than go back into a situation where the project is not understandable mm. to most so yeah. i tend i tend to when i'm modeling to um whilst i understand the complexity and whilst the discussion is very much about you know system thinking and all of that mm. for me it makes sense to be able to um, or look, as you say, from the helicopter view and be able to tease out. But sometimes it overwhelms. And I yeah. find that we are trying too hard to, you know, to talk about the complexity mm. of, 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 um, of the, the project and that sort of thing to the extent that we can't even properly evaluate the, 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 the program because it is, quote unquote, so complex. So for me, keeping it simple, um, you know, but not simplistic, is you know important in um, in in modeling for uh, for you know evaluation and project planning. And as, and as I said, not simplistic. So it's just you know trying to balance because some people do not like that approach. They talk about systems thinking, mm -hmm. and it's fine. You know, mm -hmm. to um, to to look, yeah, everything is complex. But what yes. are we trying? We are trying to solve a problem and to help our clients to you know to, yeah. to be more effective in what they do. So um, I try to strike a balance. So yes, and I, I think you're right. And the, the logic model is an aid to simplicity, but I would counsel um, against, um, and, and and that was very much in what. I think you were saying, Carolina, I'd, I'd counsel against people just trying to fit the project into a logic model. I think what you've got to do is try, first of all, to understand the project and then develop the logic model that suits it. And as you say, um, just getting that balance between simplicity so that people can understand it and then drilling down into, into the, um, into the, uh, in, in, into the, 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 the nests of the data or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's a very, uh, very good uh, question. Very interesting. Does anyone else have any other questions? Um, are there anyone, is anyone in the group who, I think there is one, at least one person in the group who um, is new to evaluation um, and uh, had they heard of logic models perhaps in other work that they did as a program manager or as a uh, program designer or a member of staff? Um, are anyone familiar from another aspect of work um, with logic models? And to those who are newer to, to evaluation, does this make sense as an approach? Right. Denise has texted um, that she's new to evaluation, as we had heard before. Yes. Um, did it make sense to you, Denise? W were you able to glean anything? Okay. She says she understands the flow. Mm -hmm. I'm pleased to say we've got 14 people on, on board. Mm -hmm. So everyone is pretty familiar with, um, with, I, I guess, you know, others are pretty familiar with a, with the concept. Mm -hmm. 
Well, okay. All right. Well, if there are no other questions, um, um, what I can do is perhaps maybe put, um, you know, you can always contact the Caribbean evaluators um, email um, address with, with any additional comments, questions. We, if you want to be part of our mailing list, you can join. You can be a, be a member, which gives you kind of enhanced access. <coughs> but um, we also have a more general mailing list where you know we we also encourage discussions. So um, I want to just really thank Alan for this um, webinar. Um, this is another in our series of webinars. We will be having another one, I think, on the sixteenth of October. Yes. Which will be delivered by Dr. Nadine Persad of the University of the West Indies Cave Hill Campus in Barbados. She um, lectures in project evaluation as part of a broader project management um, <clears throat> degree. And she will be looking at uh, quantitative methods and, you know, their application, its application <clears throat> in evaluation. So um, I apologize sincerely to those who were caught up in this. Um, I'm not sure what happened. It was a conflict in the, in the connection link. And so it caused some of you to come in late and others, because I think almost 40 people um, signed up. So I'm really concerned that so many people didn't get on, but we'll resolve the issue and this recording will be available online. Um, what I will do is also send the link directly to everybody who registered so you won't miss it. And then we will um, have a, we'll facilitate a forum for discussions or questions that persons who were not here may want to, to ask. So yes, Felipe, I see your, your question. Can we find a presentation somewhere? We'll put it, we'll just do a little bit of editing. And um, I would say by the latest Monday, it will be online at um, our website, uh, Caribbean Evaluators International dot org. Um, it's kind of long. I'm going to just type it in here. Right, so um, it will be there under our resources section. And um, yes, please, uh, you can sign up to receive our newsletter and then you will be on our kind of permanent mailing list. Otherwise, of course, please, um, you know, you can join as a member. We are only $40 a, a year. And um, these webinars are going to continue pretty much monthly throughout the year. So it's very good value for money. I believe the one in October will have a small cost for non-members. So, but look out for those notices. You will have ample time to, you know, have a look and, and you know, ensure that it's worth your while. I'm sure you'll find it, it, it is. So with that, um, any further comments? Curleen, Alan? I would just say also, Valerie, thank you for that. Um, as evaluators, we like to evaluate what we do. So um, shortly, we'll get out a little um, evaluation form. Uh, we're always pleased to have feedback, uh, positive criticism, negative criticism, um, other things that you'd like to hear about. Um, please uh, let us know. And in my role as um, Director of Training and Professional Development, um, that just helps us um, Think about the syllabus of webinars and things that would be of interest and use to people. So we'll get that um, evaluation form out shortly and um, please uh, respond to it. Mm. Yes, thanks, Alan. So with that, I'd bid you all good afternoon. Thank and you. hope to see you again next month. Thanks very much. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.